Hey guys, it's Rob and Nintendo's February Direct was shown and had some amazing games and announcements. The crazy thing is, this isn't all of Nintendo's plans for 2019. We still have so much more, but for now, let's talk about what they showed in this February Direct. Nintendo started with Mario Maker, and it's something that a lot of us wanted, but most of the requests I have seen that people gave for Nintendo is for a Mario Maker port. But Nintendo gave us Mario Maker 2, which looks insane. They added more to the game, like nods to Mario 3D World and hill customization, and a lot more. With it being on Nintendo Switch, it's going to be an amazing addition to my library of Nintendo Switch games. Nintendo also announced some kind of announcement for Super Smash Bros in an update. The specifics were not mentioned, but we'll be getting some kind of new content for Super Smash Bros Ultimate very soon. And let's not forget about Joker who's going to be coming to Super Smash Bros Ultimate in the first DLC pack for the game. We also got a look at a game that I'm very excited for and that's Ultimate Alliance 3 The Black Order. They showed off some Captain Marvel gameplay, which makes a lot of sense seeing as it's closer to the release date of that movie, which I'll be reviewing on this channel, so make sure you're subscribed for that movie review. One thing that I noticed about this gameplay for Marvel's Alliance 3 is how co-op centric this game is, which is present throughout all these games shown in this Direct. The Direct moved on to some smaller announcements with Box Girl and Box Boy, an indie game that doesn't look like my cup of tea, but I'm sure a lot of people are excited for this game. And they also added Toad Treasure Tracker DLC in this announcement, which will be the first one and the others will be available later down the line. Now third party support was also in this Direct, which a lot of these games looked exciting, Assassin's Creed, Hellblade, and a lot more. One thing I did notice in these third party games is that the frame rate in some of these games are not that good, especially Assassin's Creed and Dead by Daylight. It was stuttery and very choppy, which makes sense because it's on the Switch and the Switch isn't as powerful, but that is really actually no excuse seeing as we have games that have played on the Switch very well, like Warframe. They also announced Dragon Quest Builder, which looks very, very fun. They added cool things like a retro map, gliding, and even something that's very basic that wasn't in the first Dragon Quest Builders, which is running. Another cool thing that they add is that if you have Dragon Quest Builders on your Switch, when you have Dragon Quest Builders 2 in the Nintendo Switch, you can build these special special outfit. And let's not forget about the other fantastic game that was also announced for the Nintendo Switch, which is sure to sell gangbusters, and that's Dragon Quest XI, which looks fantastic. They added more story for the side characters, and the fact that you can take this game on the go is a huge advantage of owning the Nintendo Switch version of Dragon Quest XI. And for you Ruin Factory fans, they announced a port for Ruin Factory 4 on the Nintendo Switch with a brief announcement of Ruin Factory 5, which I've never played these games for myself, so tell me in the comment section if this game is worth picking up or not. It does look fun, and maybe I'll pick up the port for myself. And let's not forget about Yoshi's Crafted World, which a demo for that game will be on the eShop right now, so you can go actually go on the eShop and download it. Now, the Direct had a very, very odd game, and that's a Battle Royale game. But not just any Battle Royale game, they have a Tetris game. Yes, a Tetris game, you heard that right. Move over Apex Legends, Tetris is coming through. It doesn't look bad, it's just so random that it's just weird. It's just very, very weird in an odd game to put Battle Royale. Like, who would think to put Tetris and Battle Royale together and make it into a game. And of course, me being a Final Fantasy and RPG fan, you know that I have to mention that they have Final Fantasy 7, Chocobo Mystery Dungeon, and Final Fantasy 9 on the Switch now, which 7 and 9 are already available on the Nintendo Switch. Two new IPs were also announced from Square Enix and Platinum Games. Both look insanely good, especially the Square Enix game. If it's as good as Octopath Travelers, I'm sure it's gonna be a huge hit, just like Octopath Travelers was on the Nintendo Switch when it was released. Now for the final and tried and true game that blew my socks off and blew everyone else's socks off and that's Zelda Link's Awakening which looks so so good. This game is an instant buy for me and the way they animated that intro I wouldn't mind a movie in that kind of style actually. This game actually reminds me of Yoshi's Crafted World with the textures they're using. The sort of realistic but not realistic textures at the same time gives the game a fantastic look. I also love the look of Link in this game. It's simple yet amazing and it works for the art style they're going with. Overall, this Direct was amazing, and like I said in the beginning, this isn't their whole lineup for 2019. They still have other things that they have to announce and show off. I can't wait for 2019 as a Switch owner and a Nintendo fan. Tell me your favorite reveals and what you're excited for for the Nintendo Switch in 2019, and if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to the channel and leave a like. It helps the video reach more people when you do. And as always, have a good one.